where you are? You're here. This is the bulb. Urban trees, urban bushes. It was a landfill, and I think they, there was a certain amount of just sort of garbage dumping, and then they would take the rubble, the construction debris and so on, and dump it on top of that. There was a period where the developers had this idea that there was just way too much water in the bay, and nature just made this you know, colossal economic error by making so much water when they could and made more land that they could build on and develop. So they, this is actually pictures of plants where the bay turned into just sort of a river because it had been built out so much. They were going to put a marina here and hotels and so on. And what happened is they ran into the brick wall of uh, conservationists, a bunch of older you know, women basically started this and uh, they stopped it. So what does the name the bulb really mean? Well, if you look at the map, it looks like the, the way this thing, this odd shape that I'm talking about, which is a result of this development plan being stopped in its tract, is that there's sort of a wide field where it begins and it narrows like a narrow neck. And then it spreads out here on the, the part where we're, we're standing into kind of a bulb shape. If you look out, there's like a, a levee and it closes sort of lagoon rectangular lagoon. That was going to be the next stage of the landfill and they got stopped. And all the vegetation that you see here all just grew by itself. Maybe some of it was garden debris, some of it was bird seed. But everything here that you see just, just came without anybody planning anything. It's, it's a wilderness in some way. I mean they created the base for it, but everything that grew here just grew on, it, grew on its own. So it's got a kind of a, a wildness. It's also the reason why it's always been problematic for the various authorities. It's always been somewhat out of control and they, they've never liked that. And so they don't like the plants, they don't like the dogs running loose, they don't like the art that isn't approved, they don't like the people that have come out and lived here. And have always tried to clamp down, but so far, uh, the place has resisted all their efforts. There was sort of a homeless navy that lived out here that had come here and moored their boats out and they all of them sank. All these planks washed up onto the shore. So these guys, these sniff guys and me, we took this planking and a lot of the paintings that you see, they used for their paintings. I, I loved it and they, they painted collectively in their paintings, all four. They were sort of like a a jazz ensemble, you know, where they would improvise together on these paintings. And I didn't want to intrude on their trip, but I started working alongside them. And so I just saw these paintings, they just completely blew me away. I just thought these are just incredible. I and mean, I just, they were just wild and outrageous and funny and, you know, brilliant and crazy art out here. I, mean, I just loved it. I couldn't imagine who had done it. I just, that there was this unknown art that somehow nobody had talked about, nobody told me about. Um, it, it just completely, uh, uh, you know, knocked my socks off. come out here, I never could find them. They, you know, I'd see signs, there'd be new paintings. It, just, it was a total mystery. I mean, there, there's this whole term now, outsider art. It means art made by non-artists or 
crazy people or people without training or folk art. I think I did some of the energy of that I like a lot. I love the fact that the materials are all here. And that it's, you know, I like the place. I like the fact that the people are living out here. I like that the materials are. I mean, it's the stuff. You know, just looks great. I like the stuff. You know, it's much. It's beautiful. It's got great color. It's got interesting shapes. So, to some degree, I'm. It, I like that what I do is determined to some degree by what's out here and looks like what's out here. So the, the art kind of looks like it's growing out of the landscape. People often, I go, what do you call it? You know, we don't, I never did. It sort of always seemed like to limit the resonances of it. So it was fine with me to, for people to give it their own title. You know, they won't last either. I mean, the thing is, nothing out here is going to last. I mean, it's, so I'm always happy. I never know when I come one week to the next whether it's still going to be here. Either the wind or something will rust it off or somebody will have messed with it. I mean, I, you know, you just never know. Are the designs for your sculptures thought out beforehand? It was more about location. I mean, that, that, I think the first figure I did was a woman sitting up there, but that just seemed like a great place. And it had a seat, so we thought seated figure. But I didn't really, beyond that, we didn't really have an idea too much about what that figure was gonna be doing. That just happened. You know what I love? This is, what, this is about doing stuff out here that wouldn't happen in a museum or a more controlled environment. This, what I call Kokoya grass, this very aggressive plant has grown up through the pipe and is sprouting. You know, it's just amazing. I think the first one I did was the, the person fishing. And I wanted to do something that related to something that was happening out here. Dogs and birds are certainly part of that. Birds aren't easy. You know, that was sort of my first bird. I'm still working on birds. It's hard to get them flighty enough, light enough. And this other figure, that just sort of developed, shaped by the materials, then some conscious idea about preconceived notion of what I wanted that figure to be doing. This is the underside of the arch. One thing I wanted a little bit is, which I'm still thinking about, is um, that hand moves a little in the wind, and I like the idea of things that move a little bit. There used to be a ton of wood that was around here, and most of it, a lot of it came from these boats. That There were like three, four, five boats that broke up in this bay. So the white pieces, all of that comes from boats. There isn't as much wood around anymore, which is part of the reason why this, this figure is more metal than, uh, than wood, because um, we're just sort of running out of that big supply of wood that we had. This figure has a unerring stare. It's either a bolt or something in there that gives it's, it a um, pupil. It, no, it's Rainier Ale Can. Beer Can. <laughs> I have no idea what's going to happen after we, I finish with this. I'm a little not wanting to finish that piece because then I'm going to have to figure out what the next thing is. And I'm not quite sure what that's going to be. The other part of my life has been painting murals, mainly in Berkeley, called People's History of Telegraph Avenue. What inspired that was it was the, you know, the second century after the American Revolution. There was all this stuff. So we thought, you know, there's nothing in Berkeley commemorating sort of the revolutionary history of Berkeley in the 60s. So that was what that was. These murals are collective effort, like the sculpture has been work with myself and uh, Jason DeAntonis, who's uh, my son-in-law, is an incredible artist. 
I'm, I'm inspired to keep doing this by the place and the fact that it is simply wonderful to be able to come out here into this kind of this wild nature with the birds and the sky and the bay and close to the city but out here you can't even barely hear the traffic on the freeway and it's a, I've always liked doing public art I've never been much into galleries or museums I always wanted to do monumental sculpture we're just going to keep coming out of here and doing what we're doing until they, they stop us and so far um, they haven't